Right, so I make the time just gone half past 10, and uh, what a joy it is to welcome you, therefore, to this service of Family Communion. Welcome to St Andrews Online. My name is Peter, I'm the rector at St Andrews in Dibden Purdue and All Saints Church in Dibden. And uh, what a joy it is to gather, uh, if not physically present, we are virtually present with each other and we enjoy, therefore, the presence of God uh, in our midst. Thank you to those who've joined on Zoom. It's great to have you in the Zoom chat room. Uh, thank you if you've joined on YouTube and you're watching live and welcome to you if you're on Facebook too. It's lovely to have you with us in whatever means uh, you come to us. If I could just remind you to remain on mute during the service, that would be lovely if you're in Zoom. And uh, we will make a start with a, a, one or two notices from me. So um, I'm going to be leading the service, going to be presiding over communion later on. And Ian Gill, our associate minister, is going to be preaching to us uh, later as well. We are uh, launching our campaign, a coronavirus appeal for our two mission partners this morning, both in India, a ministry called Hope Gardens, and in Rwanda with the Anglican Church there. It's our joy to be able to, to give and to support them in this time of crisis. And uh, so we are making an appeal for people to contribute towards both those needy places at the moment uh, we get so much from them. It's lovely to be able to return something to them at this time. More news on that later. And we'll have a video after the service from uh, Archbishop Samuel, who gives St Andrew's Church a blessing. And it's lovely. We look forward to that during coffee time. We are having communion this morning. Uh, Claire and I will proceed communion here in our home. We invite you to join in with that, uh, with a spiritual communion in your own homes. I do have some bread ready at the appropriate time uh, if you'd like to take part in that. Lots of exciting things for the families this morning. Uh, we have got our big Bible story to show during the service, which I'm really excited about. Uh, and uh, we're looking at Jesus Calms the Storm. The theme of this morning's service is uh, facing our fears. And it's the idea of trusting in Jesus, no matter what storms or what darkness life throws at us. Uh, we know that Jesus is the one we can cling on to. And uh, so that's our theme. We're looking forward to the big Bible story. We're also trying something new for children today, which is uh, Zoom breakout groups. So for our Zone 66 group, uh, which is the primary school children, and for our Pathfinders group, which is secondary school children, uh, we have set up two different Zoom rooms. And uh, Debbie and Joe are going to be looking after the Zone 66 group and doing a little quiz with them on our big Bible story. And then Serena and James are going to be setting up a Pathfinder Zoom and they will happen during the service. Very exciting development here. And I hope the children will really enjoy seeing each other's faces uh, and getting together in that virtual way. I'm going to begin now with our opening liturgy and uh, the words for the liturgy, most of the words will appear on the screen in front of you, and uh, I will begin with our opening greeting. So I say to you, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good to hand over now to Alison and Phil, who are going to sing to us, There is an Endless Song. It's a song about clinging on to God through the storms, through the dark nights. Psalm 63, verse 8, reminds us, my soul clings to you. And we do that now as we sing together with okay. Alison and Phil.
and a lovely backing track there as well. Thank you for putting that together. And uh, what a lovely way to start our service, focusing on clinging on to Jesus through the storms. Forward now to uh, our big Bible story. Serena Carthy, our children's and families worker, has been putting one of these together each week. And today's story is about Jesus calming the storm. So I'm going to hand over to our technical team, who hopefully will be able to uh, play this now and look forward to some wonderful acting and a great story. Everybody, it's time to get cosy and to hear our next big Bible story. Today's story is called The Scary Journey. Imagine yourself in a boat. This is exactly where Jesus and his friends were. Jesus and his friends were all going to head over to the other side of a lake. Jesus had been teaching all day and a whole crowd of people had listened. It had been such a long day and Jesus decided that they should take a break from all those people. I'm so tired. Maybe I will have a little sleep. Where's my favourite blanket? Jesus was very popular because of all the miracles he had done 
and the things he said. And even though he was the son of God, he was also a human and he was very tired too. Oh, I need to rest. I think I'll just lie here. <sighs> So Jesus fell asleep. Jesus' friends managed to stay awake, but became a little uneasy as the wind started to howl and blow stronger. Hey guys, do you feel this? The wind is picking up and the boat is starting to rock. Jesus' friends didn't know, but a very big storm was coming. They were fishermen, so they had probably seen a few storms. But this one was going to be massive! Whoa! It's getting worse! I'm getting all wet! Shall we wake Jesus up? Waves started crashing over the side of the boat and the wind howled. The boat started filling with water and Jesus' friends were filled with fear. Jesus isn't budging. I tried poking him, but nothing. What are we going to do? Jesus was sound asleep. His friends were amazed and a little bit angry. How could he still be asleep? That's it. We have to wake Jesus. He can't just leave us to drown. So Jesus' friend marched over to Jesus. And with all the breath that he had in him, he shouted. Jesus, wake up! We're going to drown! Do you even care? They were surprised about what Jesus did next. He didn't get up and start screaming. He wasn't even worried. He simply got up and said, Be still! And guess what happened next? The sea became calm. The wind went away. And the waves sank back into the smooth glassy surface of the lake. Just like that. Jesus spoke and the storm ended. Wow! I've never seen anything like that. What just happened? Why were you so frightened? Don't you trust me? Then Jesus' friends looked at each other in disbelief. Who is this man? Even the waves and the wind obey him. And the sea was calm, and Jesus was calm. And Jesus' friends sat thinking about the amazing thing that they had just seen. The end. Absolutely terrific. What a, what a fantastic story. Thank you so much, Serena, and uh, all the actors for putting that together for us. And uh, I hope you can hear me okay, and hopefully I'll be uh, on the screen in just a second. But I've got two questions about that. Firstly, was that Paul Spanton with a hose over his wife, enjoying hosing his wife down, or was it a technical uh, team getting the rain on the screen? <laughs> The second question I have was, who was Jesus? Which is interesting, isn't it? Because that was the, the question that the disciples were asking too. Who is this man? Who is Jesus? It's the gallery view. Wow. So um, if I could uh, just remind you to try and keep your uh, microphones on mute during the service, if it's all possible. And uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. I don't want to all be seen. So uh, ask uh, Heidi to now sing for us. She's going to sing and play 
a song called uh, Cornerstone. My hope is built on nothing less. And again, it's picking up on this theme of through the storms, through the darkness in life, who are we going to look to? Who are we going to cling on to? And it's encouraging us to have Jesus Christ alone as the one we cling to. So I'll hand over to Heidi now as she takes on uh, this next song. So much Heidi for a lovely song fitting in really well with our theme today of clinging on to Christ in the midst of the storms of life. Uh, we've just sung haven't we that Christ is Lord of all, Lord of nature, Lord of our lives and yet so often we don't live as if that were the case and so it's right that as we gather together we remember before God the ways in which we have not lived up to his good and loving standards, the way we are broken. And we need to bring our brokenness to God now in the words of the confession. I'm going to uh, say these words of introduction and then some words of confession should come onto the screen for you to join in. With. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. 
us. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commands and to live in love and peace with all. And so we say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And so, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now a Church of England prayer for today, the sixth Sunday of Easter. God our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness, and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Mm -hmm. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to hear our two Bible readings for this morning's service. Uh, Bow Cross is going to give those two readings to us now. We're going to hear the calming of the storm and then a reading from one. Over to you, Val, if you'd like to unmute yourself and uh, we'll have our reading. Okay. The epistle is taken from 1 Peter, chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the gospel reading is taken from Mark's gospel, chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 35. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. 
Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, thank you so much for those two lovely readings. And uh, we're trying two new technical advances in today's service. The first of which is to have the words on the screen in our hymns on YouTube and Facebook. So if you're watching on YouTube and Facebook, uh, I hope that's been working and I hope you've benefited from that. The second new breakthrough this morning, which we're trying, is uh, to have children's groups. Uh, we've got our two children's groups, uh, our, client, our Zone 66 and our Pathfinders, who I'm now going to invite to head off to your own Zoom chat rooms with your Sunday school teachers. Uh, Debbie and Joe are going to be uh, after the Zone 66 group and Serena and uh, James are going to be looking after the Pathfinders. So just encourage you now to uh, get yourself set up. Ian is just about to preach to us on this theme of facing our fears. And uh, but if you could head off now uh, to your different Zoom groups, the link should have been in the email sent out to you. Uh, if you didn't receive an email, I'm afraid uh, maybe contact the church office and we'll see if we can get in touch with you next week uh, to be able to join in future. I'm going to hand over to Ian now, who's going to preach to us. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me okay. I've done a, just have a few thumbs up to see that you can hear me okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Um, just before I wanted to uh, preach from that passage from uh, Mark's Gospel, I've got a. Uh, we've set up a very, very short video clip that I'm hoping Dave can can run. It's very, very short. It's about 14 or 15 seconds only, and I and I just thought it would be appropriate for you just to look at this and just to see what your first thoughts are your what you're expecting i suppose and then what exactly happens so um if you could roll that dave that would be be brilliant i hold him up <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> I just I, I was sent that during the week by a, an ex colleague of mine, and um, it just made me laugh. Uh, it made me think about things in in the way that we expect things, we, we we know things, and we we kind of hear sounds and see things, and we know what's coming. And that just threw me out completely. And I thought about this story from Jesus being in the storm and what the disciples were expecting and something completely different happened. Um, so I thought I'd just, just, just share that this morning for two, those two reasons really, that, that it was unexpected and it made me laugh and I just wanted to share it, to share it all with you today. So, so as we've been following the, the sermon series this last few weeks about um, being able to thrive and survive in lockdown. We've come to something this morning quite quite heavy, quite serious really, about how we face, how we can face our fears. It's a, it's a raw human emotion, isn't it, to, to deal with fears? And it's something that confronts all of us at some point in our lives. We know that fears come to us in a multitude of ways, don't they? multitude of encounters sometimes we have fears of just maybe taking the next step or 
or turning the next corner. And we see in here of fears that grip ourselves and others, maybe fear of failure, fear of a loss, fear of heights, fear of flying, enclosed spaces, open spaces, snakes and spiders, fears of being judged, losing our identity, fear of losing control. I could go on, couldn't I? I could go on. And all these fears are, are real, they're true, and they can be very painful for the individual concerned. I looked at the dictionary interpretation of fear and it says this, it's an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain or harm. But it has been said that man's greatest fear though is the fear of insecurities the fear of insecurities the current coronavirus is like nothing we have seen in our lifetime is it and it continues to have and will have lasting consequences for us all and it's making us all feel insecure why is this why is this we all fear harm or loss or pain, being out of control, don't we? We're insecure because we fear we cannot control the way ahead. Our personal, professional and family lives have been rocked. The economy slides ever downwards. Our jobs are under threat. Our finances are stretched if not broken. We have doubts about our personal capacity to cope. Family and friends are struggling. We cannot outrun this thing, this thing that has changed the world in such a short space of time. I thought it was interesting that the dictionary depicts the source of fear as threat. It's a threat. Our existence and our well-being is threatened when something comes upon us that we need neither understand or cannot control. In our Bible story today, we have seen and heard how the disciples reacted when they felt threatened. As the storm gathered around them as they made their way across the lake. It's interesting that their reaction to fear was to go and find Jesus. Faced with certain fears, I guess our natural reactions are either to fight, to flee, or freeze, maybe. You can think of some situations where I have done all three. The disciples certainly couldn't fight the storm, and they couldn't flee it, could they? I suppose they sort of froze. Go and get Jesus, you can hear the cry. More in hope than trust maybe? Is this us and the world too often, I wonder? Where is he? He's asleep, somehow inexplicably in the middle of a violent storm. You know, probably some of us have, I'm sure, have been on some very unpleasant voyages on the seas. And I share your pain if you do not have sea legs. See, the problem of being on board a boat or a ship in a stormy sea is you just cannot, cannot get off. Unless you're Gareth Mead, I suppose. How can he possibly be asleep? How could he have not noticed? They must have wondered, doesn't he care about us? But there's something lovely in the normality of it, isn't there, if you like, in the story. At the beginning of the reading, we are told that it was the evening and they set off to the other side of the lake. Jesus had been with the crowds all day teaching and now he needed some rest. He was also a man after all. 
No, I think the really important point in this, the really important point in the whole story, is that Jesus was in the boat. The same boat that the disciples were journeying in, the same boat that was now nearly swamped by the furious squall, Jesus was there with them. He wasn't safe on the shore or in some faraway temple. He was there with them. Another interesting thing about this story is that Jesus actually says very little, doesn't he? Did you notice? He says, firstly, let's go over to the other side of the lake. And they do. And after being woken up by the fearful disciples, he says to the storm simply, be still, be quiet. And it is. And we notice it wasn't just less stormy. The Bible states it was completely calm, completely calm. Then comes the crunch for the disciples. Jesus asks them, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they respond, who is this? What a great question. Who is this that can command the wind and the waves? The thread of this story, though, is one of faith, isn't it? It's one of faith. As we face our daily fears and struggles with the coronavirus or the everyday stuff of life, are we prone to freeze, to flee, or to fight? Or maybe, just maybe, in faith, be encouraged to see Jesus in the boat, in the storm with us. Final thought comes to me that it's quite natural for us to be fearful. I don't want to become ill due to the virus, and I certainly don't want to die just yet. And yet there are those whom we know and love, others around us who have been or will be victims of it. The coronavirus is a fear we have to face and we give our thanks and prayers to all who are working to find a cure. And for those who step out to care and support for those who are vulnerable, ill, those supporting those who have become victims. But crucially, it's a fear we do not have to face in a spiritual sense on our own. We live in a beautiful, sometimes broken and yet imperfect world. But God resides here too. Just as Jesus by his Holy Spirit and he has promised to be with us through all the ordinary days, the calm days as well as the stormy, stormy ones. Remember, Jesus is in the boat. I'm gonna close with those lovely words we heard this morning from our reading from 1 Peter, which is so relevant and so encouraging. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Ian, thank you so much for that lovely message. What a really helpful reminder. Jesus is in the boat with us through these storms which we're facing. We're going to respond to what we've heard this morning by saying the words of the creed. They should come up on the screen in front of you in just a moment. And I'm going to lead you uh, in these words, these ancient words, which remind us of the core truths of what it is we believe. So let us declare our faith in God. 
we believe in one God, the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is now. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm now going to hand over to Karen McGill, who's going to lead us in our prayers of intercession this morning. Thank you, Karen. Let us pray. Lord of all grace, we thank you that you are not a remote God, but that at great cost, you gave us your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior and friend. Thank you that you are a God of love. Your word reminds us not to be afraid, but so often we allow our fears to conquer our thoughts and we strive to do things in our own strength. Yet you are a God of compassion and you long for us to turn to you to shelter under your wings of peace. So today, in these times of feeling vulnerable and afraid, we pray that you would help us to turn our fears into prayer as we seek your face. In our time together, we bring before you the things which are on our hearts and we lay them at your feet. In this outbreak of coronavirus, we pray for your protection on the elderly and vulnerable, both here and abroad. We pray particularly for poorer countries who do not have the resources that we benefit from. We pray for the work of all the aid agencies and all the charities and for people to be able to continue giving generously as they are able. We thank you for communities pulling together to look out for each other's needs. We pray for the work of the food bank. We pray for those who are lonely or socially isolated and those disadvantaged by poverty, homelessness or other adversity and particularly for those in abusive relationships. We pray for the residents and staff of care homes and for all who work in the NHS. Grant wisdom to all those who care for the sick and to the policymakers and scientific experts that they would make wise decisions for the good of all. May the right decisions be made for our school children. We pray against a resurgence of COVID-19 and ask you to guide and protect all those involved in vaccine trials. Help us all to be self-controlled and considerate in the gradual lifting of lockdown. We thank you for the provision of technology and the way in which it has helped people to connect, to work remotely, and to think afresh about whether some journeys are really necessary. But we bring to you the heartbreak of the lack of everyday human contact, felt most keenly by those who live alone, and especially those who do not have access to modern technology. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the news is dominated by coronavirus, help us not to forget, but rather to redouble our prayers for all innocent people who are caught up in conflict and hatred. We pray for those around the world who are persecuted for their faith, those who live in fear, and those who are disregarded and left on the sidelines of life and forgotten once the news has moved on. We pray for your church, Lord, for our brothers and sisters in Christ, both here and around the world. We ask for your blessing and strength for our mission partners and for our church leaders, 
and ask that you would guide and equip them and give them your assurance of peace. We bring before you now all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We remember those who are bereaved and ask that you would comfort them in their loss. And we pray especially for those who have been unable to be with their loved one as they would have wished due to the coronavirus restrictions. And we pray for the family and friends of Catherine Thatcher as they prepare for her funeral this week. Finally, Lord, we ask that you would help us to trust in you with all our hearts and lean not on our own understanding. Give us the grace, we pray, to focus on you and enjoy the gift of each new day with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Karen, so much for leading us in our intercessions this morning. We are sharing communion in uh, just a moment after our next song. And before we do that, it's our tradition to share the peace, to make our peace with our brothers and sisters before we gather around the Lord's table. Uh, we're not able to necessarily do that verbally to one another, but we can sign in sign language again. If you'd like to do that on your screens in just a moment, I'll remind you, peace be with you is how it, how it goes. I'll do it once more. Peace be with you. Fantastic. So uh, I'm going to say the peace of the Lord be always with you. And you say, and also with you. So let us offer one another a sign of Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining in with that unusual piece. Uh, but lovely to see all the people on the screen. Peace be with you. I'm going to uh, reflect now on uh, what we've been hearing with a song uh, called How Deep the Father's Love for Us. It's performed by Tom Besley and uh, we're delighted to be able to show it uh, this morning. And it helps us to reflect on the fact that Jesus not only got in the boat with us, but he went to the cross for us. And we'll hand over to Tom now as we uh, enjoy uh, worshiping together. Oh, 
to share in communion together we remind ourselves of what Jesus has done for us and the blessings he has brought us through his body and his blood you're uh, going to join in with us at home do have some bread ready and we will go through the uh, liturgy now which is familiar to many of us do join in in the bowl which may or may not come up on the screen as we uh, through the The Lord is here. His His spirit spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We We lift them them to to the Lord our God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, Father, we we do do this this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of God. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave thanks and said, Drink this water. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of me. His blood is shed for We proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory. Send your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, Make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, 
holy, holy Lord, God of my heart, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We now pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one body. So draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanks. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercy we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table but you are the same lord whose nature is always to have mercy grant us therefore gracious lord so to eat the flesh of your dear son jesus christ and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Body of Christ broken. In the body of Christ broken for you. Right. Now join in with this prayer of thanksgiving, having received bread to remind us of all that Jesus has done for us. We say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us back. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and open the gate of glory. May Thank we you. who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to us. We whom the Spirit loves give life to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Going to hand over to the Needham family now who are going to sing our final hymn for us in Christ alone, reminding us of who it is we put our trust in in the storms of life and as we face our fears. Over to you and thank you.
service this morning focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ and in him alone we put our trust in him we stand and thank you to all our musicians and singers who've uh, played a part in this morning's service to our prayer to uh, our Bible reader to Ian for bringing God's word to us and uh, for you for joining in whether you've been on Zoom uh, or on YouTube or Facebook it's great to have you with us this morning do stay after the final blessing for a time of coffee. Uh, we'll be launching our appeal for our mission partners in the midst of the coronavirus crisis, uh, both in India, Hope Gardens and Rwanda, our Anglican link. Uh, but uh, for now, let me wish you uh, the very best for the week ahead. Uh, our love and prayers go with you and I'll finish the service with a blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. If I ask the Needhams just to play us out with a few chords, give you a chance to perhaps put the kettle on, stand up and move around, and then we'll enjoy our coffee time together.
Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. What a, a lovely service. Great to be able to join in with everyone and uh, thank you for take, playing a part in it. I um, think we need to start. Can everyone hear me all right? Yep, marvellous. I think we've got to start with a happy birthday actually because it's uh, Eileen Sargent's 80th birthday today. So, um, uh, there's a message on the chat as well. Do get your chats up and uh, make some comments. Um, Lynn has uh, just posted that as well. Happy 80th to Eileen Sargent. She was hoping to be on Zoom today. I, I know she was trying to uh, uh, get that ready, but um, haven't seen her. But hopefully they are on YouTube and we're able to um, uh, uh, to say hello to Eileen. While, uh, while we're working that out, a few quick hellos. Hello to everyone who's uh, joining us on Zoom for the first time. Uh, it's been particularly good to see Josh and Shannon Mead uh, over in, on, on Zoom. So lovely to have you. And uh, that's, um, <laughs> I, I can't get, get uh, oh, I can no. see uh, Roy and Chris Wayne there. If I could remind you just to keep yourself on mute, otherwise you'll come. Hello, Roy and Chris. Uh, Peter, can two things on birthdays? Yeah, it's really disconcerting at the moment. Not the birthdays, but <laughs> I can't see anyone. Everybody's a black box. So if you're waving at me and stuff, I'm sorry, I can't see you. Um, but Jenny Clifton had her birthday this week, so happy birthday to Jenny Clifton, also. Um, and also, Ruth Cheeseman had her birthday, and she would like to share a birthday message with us. Oh. So can we hear from Ruth Cheeseman? Is that okay? My birthday's tomorrow on the 18th. Oh, it's tomorrow. <sighs> Happy birthday to you, Ruth. Um, I feel... <laughs> who, who do you share a birthday with? Do you share a birthday with Nana's friend Chris from church? Chris yeah. Curtis's birthday tomorrow as well. Right, also, thank you. Great, so we have a few people that we need to celebrate. Good to hear from you, Ruth. Have a great birthday. I'm Thank you. Talk, okay. What was that? Say it again. I, I wanted to talk as well, Mummy. Thank you, Ruth. I'm going to go one small present from Ruth. What, yeah, one small present on Ruth's birthday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's got Paw Patrol wrapping paper, yeah, you can, yeah. You can tell he's been nosing around. <laughs> he's been looking in the cupboards. <laughs> That's smart, Ben, you can't be left out. Yeah. Too right. I'm going yeah, to yeah, mute you now, mate, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to hear from you all. Happy birthday, Ruth. Happy birthday, Jenny and Eileen. And I know there's some others coming through on the chat as well, but we should probably sing at some point, shouldn't we? I feel like that would be good to sing to everyone. That's lovely. Thank you for, for all those happy birthdays. Um, just want to uh, share that actually we're beginning our campaign, fundraising campaign this morning for both Hope Gardens and Rwanda. And um, we have a video which is uh, from Archbishop Samuel and uh, Hilary Atherton, who's the director of Hope Gardens. And Archbishop Samuel gives a special um, video message of blessing to St Andrews. It's rather lovely. Uh, I don't know if um, the technical team could tee that up uh, in just a second and uh, so we can all um, see that and enjoy it. It's a, it's a few minutes long but it, and hopefully you'll be able to hear hear him. But for those of you who've, uh, who've met Archbishop Samuel, it would be a, a really nice opportunity. Um, and um, our email that went out on Friday contained all the information about um, giving as well and how to contribute to those, uh, both those needs. Hello, I'm Hilary from Hope Gardens. You might be familiar with Hope Gardens. It used to be called the Rhema Partnership and it was established by Archbishop Samuel and the Reverend Richard Lloyd. Hope Gardens works in southern India, in Tamil Nadu and in Kerala, and it seeks to enhance the lives of others. Many of the communities that we look after are rural, 
and they have vulnerable and marginalised people who live in those communities. Through our brilliant network of pastors and our social welfare programmes, we can bring healthcare and educational opportunities to those most in need. But at the moment, I want to talk to you about their current needs. We are all living through this pandemic and as we navigate our course, we have come across some major obstacles. There is a real risk of starvation. We hear from our pastors in those communities that those people who are dependent on daily wage work, such as working in the plantations or in the paddy fields, have not received an income for six weeks. Now these families do not have savings and so without an income, they're unable to care for themselves and provide the essential needs. For £11, as part of our emergency appeal, you can help a family in southern India. £11 will enable one family to receive a food package distributed by our pastors. That food package will contain rice and lentils and also some grains, vegetables, things like onions, potatoes, tomatoes, as well as some toiletries. That will sustain a family for two weeks. Archbishop Samuel will give you an insight in his video, but I am so grateful for the support that this church has given us. Thank you for supporting Hope Gardens. Dear friends, in St. Andrews in Dibden Palu, greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Because of this coronavirus, since uh, March 17th, we are in lockdown. Our pastors, they are unable to conduct a Sunday service. Our uh, congregation, they are all uh, daily laborers. They are not coming to our church. Even there is no income to our pastors. Uh, they are unable to maintain their families. Even our congregation, our believers also, they, they are not working. They do not have a money, a finance. Uh, they are all uh, in starvation. They are in hunger. So we are praying to God to provide their needs. I would request you, my dear brothers and sisters, even beloved Vika, kindly pray for us. And if it is God's will, you can extend your generous support to our project, our pastors for congregation. We extend our sincere thanks to you, to all our brothers and sisters in St. Andrews, Ibn Brother. We pray for you. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, you have given this wonderful time. Lord, I pray for all my brothers and sisters in St. Andrews, Dibden Palu. Thank you, Lord, you have given them wonderful heart, wonderful love and consent to support our Hope Garden ministries, to support our pastors, to support all our community people. They are in hunger, in, they are in starvation. Lord, you pray, you bless them, Lord. We pray for them. If it is your will, let them uh, extend to support our ministries, Lord. As a servant of God, I bless them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, my dear brothers and sisters in St. Andrews especially the Vicar. Thank you. We are so grateful for the relief efforts of our Indian partners led by Archbishop Samuel. And we are so thankful that we are able to deliver these parcels to those in need. And for just 11 pounds, you can help us do just that. Thank you for your continued support. That's wonderful. Um... Brilliant, brilliant to be able to uh, have that message from Archbishop Samuel and from Hilary Atherton, the director of Hope Gardens, one of our uh, key mission partners, uh, along with the church in Rwanda. 
and the parish of Marin Yundu, we are launching our own campaign to support both those mission partners. And uh, information about how to give will be uh, is been sent to you in the email, and uh, will also be sent out again next week, and uh, hopefully go up on our website. But great uh, through technology to be able to connect with um, our mission partners in that way. Be be lovely just to drop in before we uh, go any further on that one. We drop drop in on. Uh, and Zone 66 and Pathfinders. Do we get any any feedback on how those meetings went today? Um, I will speak. I don't know if you can see me. I'm having a few technical difficulties, but um, we had a great time with Pathfinders. Actually, a really lovely group. Um, not sure that many of them have made it back to join us, but uh, speaking about how storms in our life can actually make our faith stronger and. Uh, Talking about bad weather stories, your your family had some good bad weather stories. Peter, uh, poor Rupert on his bike, nearly being blown off. <laughs> um, another quite amazing weather stories we were speaking about. Um, and yeah, just just sharing a chance to to pray together and just just to see their faces. Really lovely to see their faces. Um, I don't know if anybody else on here has made it back from Pathfinders and wanted to say anything feel free to unmute yourself and, and jump in. Uh, but if not, it'd be lovely to hear from either Debbie or Joe about what, what went on in Zone 66. So please uh, jump on. Hi, I'm here. Oh, see you. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, we had a great time. Debbie and I um, did Zone 66 today and Debbie um, led the story. Um, the kids were having great fun exploring various backgrounds today. So um, a few exploratory things going going on. Harry was enjoying his cereal. Um, Lucy was upside down on the screen. Um, Eva was under a giant leaf. Um, so yeah, it was, it's still fun and games. And it was just lovely to see the kids. Really, really nice. So hopefully we can carry on every week doing that. Great. Really good. Thank you so much. That's great. Very, very good from Phil Labry there, suggesting on the chat that um, it should be renamed Zoom 66 rather than Zone 66. I uh, yeah, very good. Well done, Phil. You beat me to that one. <laughs> right. And the uh, I, I don't, is Debbie Armitage there? Debbie, do you want to add add anything to that? Can't can't yeah, see her. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Debbie. Uh, yeah, go for it, Debbie. Um, everything that Joe said, it was lovely to see the children. So, um, yeah, thanks to the parents for setting up whatever extra electronic devices. So thank you to the parents for helping enable that. And um, yes, it was lovely just to see them. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. And thank you for organising that as well. Really, really good initiative. Great. Uh, who else could we hear from? I don't know if Chrissy Preswell is still there, but she is running several 5K, I think it's a 5K a day, is that right? Chrissy Preswell for charity? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're feeling quite tired now. <laughs> are you feeling quite, how many 5Ks have you done so far? Yeah. 16. 16. Every 16. day of May, basically. And I've been on every single one. <laughs> <laughs> have you? That's amazing. And has George done a couple as well? Yeah. Yeah, he hasn't done all of them, but he has done very well. Wow. And just remind us who, who you're raising money for. Abby's Heroes, like, for, um, I think it's for cancer. So children and families um, are attending the PM Brown Ward in Southampton. Um, and mm -hmm. Abby was um, a patient there. And her mum set it up, so it's now called Abby's Heroes. That's, that's amazing. And how many have you got to go? Till the end of the month. So a 5k a day, every day of May. So I think we're over halfway now. So uh, another 16. <laughs> that's absolutely wonderful. Really, really well done. And uh, wish you the best for the last second half of, uh, of the mar marathon. Probably quite a few marathons by the time you finish. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Chrissy. That's lovely. Uh, Peter, I, f I forgot to say that we need to show craft for those who have done their craft this week. And I know um, the Cheesemans are keen to show their craft. Uh, so anybody else who, who has done one, please please wave and 
um, unmute yourself and speak to us. But Cheeseman, go for it. Oh. Here, three, okay. A little bit closer. Just a little bit closer. Oh, okay. That is amazing. <laughs> that looks so great. I said I'd go as well. Oh, Ben, I love it. Tell your phone phone though, Ben. I can't over there. <laughs> yeah, guys, you've done a great job. I'm impressed. That is fantastic. <laughs> oh, we go again. Do you? Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a long You told everyone that a minute ago, mate. I love it, Ben. I'm so pleased you're so excited. Christy, you, I think you had something to share as well there. Okay. Hello. 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 That's, that's uh, great. George's picture. Uh, oh. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> and Eva has done. We weren't sure if there's any female disciples, but um, we've got some ladies in Jesus calming the storm. Fantastic. I love it. That's great. Is that a fan, Eva? <laughs> 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 On your picture. Have a look. That's the steering wheel. The steering, well, wheel. The steering wheel. I love it. I thought you might have had like your own wind effects in your picture, which I thought would have been very clever. So that's great. Love those. Anybody else need to share their, their craft? Just unmeet yourself and, and chip in. But if not, Peter, over to you. I was wondering whether uh, uh, Josh and Shannon's still in the room. Be nice to, to hear from them if they uh... Hello. 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 How are you doing up in Nottingham? Yeah, we're doing well, thank you. We thought we'd uh, we we'd uh, come home and visit St Andrews <laughs> this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we're we're doing well, thank you. Yeah. That's great. You, you're um uh, you're up in Nottingham. Um, you're not newly married anymore, really, are you? But um, no, time's <laughs> flying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's great, great to see you both. Hope you're uh, coping all right with the situation. And um, yeah. back. <laughs> how how are things with your church? Are, are they able to? Uh, I'm guessing they're online as well. Yeah, so they're they're recording all the different aspects of the service during the week, and then doing uh, a premiere of the video uh, three times a day at the three different service times that they normally do. Um, and then meeting up with our small groups, similarly to, to home groups um, in the week on Zoom and just catching up and having a chance to speak to people there. Brilliant, brilliant. That's lovely. And uh, and have you been able to get out and about? Shannon, you're still working, presumably, with them, um, uh, with, with two doctors as, uh, as, the, as the parents of your children you're looking after. Is that right? I am, yes. Yeah, so still working full time. Um, the dad is currently on the ward for the coronavirus patients, so it's quite stressful for them. Um, so yeah, just trying to just trying to get get through every day with the homeschooling, which is uh, I think I'm finding it harder than the kids are with the new types of work that they're getting. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's going okay, and I'm having quite early finishes, which is quite nice. So getting back and spending some time with Josh, which is really nice. Fantastic. That's, it's lovely to hear from you both. Great. Thank you for coming down to St Andrews for, <laughs> for the day. And uh, I'm sure um, I'm sure Val and Gareth are, are delighted that you've been able to join <laughs> us as well. Uh, is Ian McGill there? Is Ian McGill? Ian, do you want to do one of your um, picking on people slots where, where you spot people and just mm. just highlight people? You found you found me. I was trying to hide. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, OK. I, I have picked out a couple. <laughs> I've noticed that um, Dominic again has managed to make it to Las Vegas. And um, and Sandy and Paul Spanton are on holiday somehow as well. I don't know how they managed to do it. I can't make, quite make out where they are. Is it the Bahamas? I can't. No, no certainly not. Yellowstone National Park. Oh, right. <laughs> oh wow. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Dominic, thank Dominic, thank you for your message and, and great to hear about your mum um, helping out at uh, Food Bank. Uh, that is lovely. Bless mm. you. We, we wish you wish her all the best. It's Jill, isn't it? Um, is she there? 
He's a, oh, right, okay, okay. But thank you, thank, thanks to her for all that she's doing. Bless her, bless her for that. And I just wanted to apologize slightly to Gareth Mead, actually. Um, hi, Gareth. Just, uh, I don't know if you can unmute Gareth. I think one of the one of the few people that's able to get off a boat in rough seas in in the Solent. Um, well, yeah, but I'd, I'd like to say, Ian, that sometimes we get off one ship and it's even rougher on the smaller boat we get onto. So, uh, <laughs> but of, often at two o'clock in the morning, I find the most comfortable places to be asleep in the back of the boat while we get out. <laughs> <from> the- <laughs> <laughs> I should have come to you. I should have come to you for some advice uh, about it, Gareth. Well, yeah, but I, I must admit, I also found the older I've got, the more seasick I get. Oh, that's not good for your job, hey. <laughs> well, there was there was one occasion I went out to the uh, to board the Azura at three o'clock in the morning, and it was it took us an hour, over an hour and twenty minutes to get there, when normally it takes about thirty five. And uh, when I got on board, the captain said to me, would you like a cup of coffee? I said, I'll let you know when I'm ready. <laughs> and an hour and a half later, as we were passing the refinery at Forley, I said, I'll have that cup of coffee. Now. <laughs> so, uh, it just shows it gets to us all sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks, Gareth. Uh, that, that's great. And there's, there was a couple of other people that my eyes just, my eyes fell upon. Apologies if I'm going to pounce on you again today, but it was just a... Um, Where's, where's Julie Tatchell? I can see Julie. Um, hi, Julie. She just put a prayer request in, actually, Ian. That was good timing. Pray for Alex. What's the, yeah, just just want to say about that prayer request, Julie. Just to let you know that after quite a long time, Alex has finally been put on a 12-week placement. He's on a COVID ward, so he's a, a newly qualified nurse now. And he's on a COVID ward. He's not on ICU, um, but he obviously is still in a situation that you know. I'm, we're all praying that you know God, he will God will be with him in that situation, and he'll um, you know get on all right. I think it's mixed feelings. He's pleased to be able to be getting on and doing something useful, having waited so long. But at the same time, it's obviously difficult times too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, well, we can certainly hold him in our prayers, Julie. Thank you. And just, just, just to say, Julie, the only reason I watch the repair shop on Wednesday is because you're on it. It's the only thing worth watching. Oh, bless you, <laughs> Ralph the Rhino. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic think, job. I think we might be on it again next week, doing something a little bit more professional. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank oh, good you. Thank you, Judy. Should we have a little um, quiz as to um, uh, as to who spotted who Jesus was in in the big Bible story this week? <laughs> who who <laughs> worked it out? Guys, the costume director for that deserves an award, I think. <laughs> who worked it out? Any hands up? I think Hazel Kennedy might have worked it out. Look at her chat. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, well done, Hazel. You beat us to it. <laughs> it was indeed Martin Cross. Yeah, it took a while for me to get that. Though. Great acting, Martin. Wherever you are, you were fabulous. <laughs> and and fun, funnily, Ed did, to answer your other question, Peter, Ed put the effect of, of the rain in. <laughs> so when I was watching it yesterday, the first time I saw it was with James Williams when he was doing his part. And I thought, oh my goodness, he is incredibly committed to this cause like he's waited till a rainy night to film his bit and then i saw <laughs> and then i saw sandy in, in her living room and i thought oh no that's that's just an effect because <laughs> sandy's not that committed to drench her living room <laughs> and i and i thought it was paul spanter with his hose goodness <laughs> me. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not much too near the organ couldn't do that <laughs> <laughs> Peter, I just want to. I just want to try again. If I, I think we might, I think we got Margaret Ryan still um, in the room, and I, I, I'm sure it's the same number. I don't know if Margaret can hear us, or whether she can, or you can unmute her. Um, it's the phone. It's the phone right at the very end. Um, I, I don't know I'll if, unmute her. Yeah. I don't know if um, Mar- Margaret, are you, are you listening? Yes. Ah, can you, 
I, I can only hear some of it because they, uh, to do with my phone arrangements and my hearing aids, I can't hear all that's going on. But I th- I know that uh, that you were talking to Julie, and I don't know what she said. But I, I, anyway, I, it was very deep and meaningful what she was talking about. Um, about what? It was it was very deep and meaningful as it always is with Julie. Very Temple. meaningful. Yes, yes. And Margaret, we can all hear you very well. I don't know if you want to just You to can say hear hello. me, I know. Other people can always hear me, but I'm trying to make sense of it all as I'm listening. Um but um I can hear I'm I'm I imagine that I've got to imagine who's speaking and I think um, I mean, I think Ian's been speaking. I, don't, I certainly don't hear Peter's voice very clearly, but uh, I, I didn't come in until quite late because, well, I won't go into it, but it was, uh, uh, I didn't get here till late. But I, so I don't know what the first hymn was, uh, and I just can make out what this, what hymn it is, but I can't really hear the words. But and I did hear the end of the sermon. I was trying to to get it right, but oh well. I won't trouble you with this. I'm very thankful that I can do what I can do, but I'm I'm very curious to know what all the things I missed. And some people had birthdays and I don't know who they were. It also and also it sounded like Debbie was saying an awful lot, but I don't may not have been anyone called Debbie, and I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, I'm just giving you a picture of my <laughs> my reception. <laughs> but anyway, it's been very nice to be here, uh, and I do have the opportunity of going over it all again visually on Tuesday, but the sound won't be any better, I'm afraid. Anyway, I've looked, read up, read them, the, I gathered the readings and I've read them both, so there we are. <laughs> Mar- Margaret, it's, it's Ian, it's just to, just to say that it's lovely to hear your voice uh, and we miss you so much, miss seeing you and it uplifts us all that you, you are there and you are listening in as best you can, so God bless you and we, we look forward to seeing you whenever we can, but bless you, thank you for talking to us. wonderful yeah that's wonderful fantastic lovely to hear from margaret there really really special um i think the determination of everyone to get to, to get online and to get onto zoom has been been terrific in this church family so well done to all of you and uh, also to families who've helped out uh, supporting uh, supporting their children and i know we had um uh we had i think it was graham uh, Graham and Vera's daughter maybe Gemma who was on earlier on but I don't think she's still with us but uh, people connecting from from all around the country which is lovely um, I don't know whether Tony wanted to share anything else about uh, the Hope Gardens and the um, the appeal should I pick, pick on Tony I've just unmuted you Tony oh what can I say Vicar thank you very much <laughs> uh, yeah, we only became aware a couple of weeks ago of the uh, the seriousness of the situation within Hope Gardens. Uh, a number of our pastors have been down to uh, one meal a day with their families. Uh, and uh, some of the, uh, the congregation members also are struggling and uh, coming along and asking them to share their food. Uh, and just talking to other people in church, I guess it's a pretty similar situation in Rwanda. Uh, and it's just pretty grim. The, the very, very poorest of people are the ones who appear to be suffering most. So um, we've uh, sent some emergency funding over just to uh, try and uh, uh, keep people going at the moment. But St. Andrew's is just such a generous, generous church. And if we can give uh, both through Rwanda and Hope Gardens. Uh, but on behalf of Hope Gardens, I would just say thank you so very much indeed. That's lovely. Thank you, Tony. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, um, it's been, been great to be able to connect with both our mission partners in, in that way. And the Frost family who've been able to join us on Zoom too, which has been lovely. Any other news? Anyone want to share any, any other news before we, before we close this morning? 
Uh, just for prayer, there's there's been a message just come in from Susie Tabbitt. I don't know if you could read that out, Peter, because I don't know how well I'm coming across with my <laughs> technical issues, but it'd be good to pray about that. Yes, that's right. So um, please could we, this is from Susie Pavitt about uh, her mum, Liz. Please could you all pray for my mum, uh, who will tell me off for saying this, but hey ho, who is in Livingston Hospital at the moment, uh, just with the basic infection, but it's being kept in so they can try and give us some walking rehab too. Also hoping Dad will take some time, that's Peter, Peter Kolf, uh, will take some time to rest for himself as uh, he does so much and takes little time for himself. Oh, lovely message from Susie to, to her parents uh, and to all of you, just about Liz and Peter and uh, how Liz is currently in Livingston Hospital. So um, we, we'll be praying for, for Liz and uh, um, yeah, all, all those, uh, lots of people struggling at the moment. We, we, we wouldn't highlight them unless they do that themselves. Um, but um, uh, yeah, dif difficult week for many. I think for a bit of fun, Peter, we should all unmute ourselves and sing happy birthday. I think that sounds a great idea. And have a so, bit of chaos. <laughs> it, we're, it's Eileen Sargent's 80th birthday, just to clarify. And Jenny Clifton has recently celebrated her birthday. And Ruth Cheeseman, is that right? I think that's right. I think you should start us off, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I've unmuted everyone. Are you ready? One, two, three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Everyone has got a birthday. Happy birthday to you. Round of applause. Now that is how you do virtual choir. <laughs> <laughs>
that's really lovely to know that you were able to do that. Yeah. Bless sure. you. You'll be praying. Thank you. I'll move yeah. myself now. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Thanks for sharing that. Good. It's uh, it's almost lunchtime. I don't know if uh, Ian or Serena want to share anything. Any other final words? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's my final word. Bless you all. Um, still praying, still missing you, and can't wait till we can be together physically. Don't know how long that will be, but I think it's going to be a party, and I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, hope you have a great week. Thank you. Yeah, I'd, I'd echo that. Thank you, Serena. I think it's um. We're hanging in there, aren't we? And um, just supporting everybody as best we can. I think I think the untold story almost is is how many people are reaching out and help, helping so many people. Um, it doesn't always get reported on, but it, it's such a huge, huge benefit to everybody that everyone's reaching out and trying to keep an eye out and look out for people and supporting everyone in whatever way. Yeah. Uh, so, so thank you for. All those that are making the phone calls and, and checking on their friends and neighbours and in home groups and you know that, there's so much of that going on um, and we share that we share that burden beautifully and um, with God's blessing. So thank you for everyone that's helping each other, not necessarily just inside the church but outside the church and everything. It, yeah. it makes such a difference uh, in community. So, so it's one of the things that I, I just. My PS to my sermon, if you like, uh, was was one of the things that I was troubled me was is that this thing is is making us so fearful that we're almost frightened of of, of doing anything or trusting anyone or anything again. And um, I, I think we have to we have to resist that. Mm. Uh, we have to go forward in faith. Um, with you know, with God's blessing, Jesus, Jesus is in the boat, and, and we'll keep, we'll, we'll keep that in our minds and our hearts. Yeah. So, um, bless you. Sorry, I was on sermon two. Sorry, <laughs> <Peter>. <laughs> I was just about to mute you there, Ian. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I'm sorry. I know I said I had nothing to share, but Ian, Ian inspired me, and something I did want to share is that I don't know about you, but I just feel like public feeling is changing again and you know at the beginning we were all very much let's support each other let's be compassionate and that was very much the narrative but now it, it just feels like it's slipping a bit into being divisive um with these new um updates we've had from the government so i would just i would just echo what ian said really and this is the time to be kind um this is the time to uh, push aside the fear um and show love so yeah, that would be my last closing thought. Wonderful. Thank you both, you two. Thank you for everyone for taking part in the service and for you all for joining in, whether on Zoom or YouTube or Facebook Live. And uh, should we finish by giving each other a wave just to say goodbye and uh, enjoy your lunchtime. <laughs> God bless everyone. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>